And then over the flash rise, and back again in one of my favourite games of this year. Ambition and Minuet in Power. Played it through once, did not end well. Replayed the ending on my own, and it changed completely. It's a fascinating game. So, we're going to run through, we're going to have another run through of it. Now, I'm torn on how to do this. Last time I did two one hour episodes a week. This time, I'm torn on the idea, idea of doing recording, doing it, but do, still doing do, what, to put doing, let me start that again. I'm torn on the idea of either doing again one, two one hour episodes a week. What I'm also thinking about doing is just doing one big episode a week, i.e., a two, two and a half hour episode a week. And then just putting a break in the middle of it, but I don't know. But anyway, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, I just love this case. We're gonna have another game. All right, let's go. Prologue, event story, twenty March, seventeen eighty nine. The car carriage rumbles and bounces along the cobbles as you approach Paris. It's taken over a week to get here, even carrying just yourself and your luggage. Click these dots. These dots means there's more story ahead. Click anywhere in this text box to advance. Your fancy Armand arranged for the cash to take you from your small village to a tavern he enjoys called the Orphan's Feast. There he'll meet up with you. You'll, li you'll likely take them together, then he'll show you to a new home in Paris. For now, though, you've already finished all of your books, and Armand's letter, letter, Armand's letter is your only entertainment, other than starting to staring out of the window. Yes, yes, okay. Okay. Uh, let's go again. This choice is. Hang on, hang on. Let's read that one again. This choice is for characterization purpose. It does not impact your path or your stats, so just say what you want. Mm, let's just look out the window. You can you knock out of the window and pit past it. It's even more than you imagined. The streets are right, a right of colour and energy. As people go about their days, elegant persons of fashion struck like brilliant peacocks. Students stumble under the weight of their books. Beggars alternate between pleading for arms and shouting invectives at passers-by. Everything feels significant, like the world's next act hinges on all of their choices. Though part of you is worried about your, about your unfamiliar surroundings, you feel mostly excited. This, is, this is, place is, is to be the stage of your new life. Read Armand's letter. You must have read the brief letter over a hundred times, but you always find new details to puzzle over. On my letter, were often extremely long. I have you frequently tease him. He tease him in your own missives. Share a vet. I know it may be sudden, but I want to invite you to live with me in Paris. Back in your provincial hometown, you were engaged to Armand before he moved north to Paris to participate in the estate general. He dreamed of changing the country, and this was the political event of the other century. You made love letters to each other, love letters soaked in perfume. He replied with the volumes about how much he misses you. The romance of it all helped make up for the inconvenience. Right, I'm just going to quickly look at something because the Estates General. Let me just Google it because I cannot remember this. I should do because I did history at uni and laughing me, I cannot remember. The Estates General, the makeup of it. The Estates General. 1789, where are we? Yeah, the State General was the General Assembly representing the French estates of the realm. The clergy was the first estate, the nobility was the second estate, and the commons were the third estate. So basically, yeah, it's relevant, because it, it is relevant to know that. See, the clergy were the first, the nobility were the second, and the commons were the third. Not that your parents cared much about the romance. At first, you'd been afraid to tell them their youngest daughter wanted to move far away. Instead, they nearly threw you onto the couch to follow them on to Paris. <laughs> that's great. I just that's fantastic. The writing in this makes me absolutely howl sometimes. There's a bit coming up soon, which just that just makes me laugh every time I see it. Anyway, when you stood, while you understood the significant benefits your common family would receive from your marriage into a noble one, you couldn't help but be a little annoyed at their eagerness to see you off. I can't wait for you to see it. It's unlike anything back home, a truly vital place where anyone can be anything. Yet, embrace. Excuse my butchering of the French language. Apologise that right, I still love speaking English. That was something you were looking forward to, a chance to be something more. After all, Baroness Yvette de Marbeau has a certain ring to it. 
Before you know it, the car starts to slow down. You must be here. Armando arranged to meet you at a time called the Orphan's Feast. As tired and rumpled as you are, you're glad to be. You're glad that he planned to meet you in a place with ample food and wine. You arrive. The coachman helps you out of the carriage, and you find yourself outside a glowing, friendly-looking tavern. A sign shows a grubby-looking child holding a plate piled high with fresh bread and roasted meats. Here goes nothing. Inside a polished woman. Sorry, I'll start again. Inside a woman polishing her mantle looks up at you as you enter, and her face breaks into a bright smile. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to your office feast. Her eyes linger expectantly on the door for a moment before settling on you. Settling on you. You're suddenly reminded of how rare it is for a woman to travel by themselves. You will see the art style. I think the art style is beautiful. The really just lovely hand drawn art style. What you'll see, you'll see a lot of characters look exactly the same. The main characters are all individually personalised. However, the general characters pretty much are all the same kind of looking thing, basically. You get all your maids look similar look like this. So yes, yeah, so you'll see a lot of characters will be familiar over and over again. But that's because the generic kind of non-vital characters are just generic characters. Generic art, basically. How may I be of service, she asks. This is my first time here. Is there anything I should know to help me find my fiance? I'm looking for my fiance. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing that. I've done that before. Ah, a missing person. Actually, sounds interesting, she says with a devious smile. The, mar the barmaid pauses to think, I haven't heard that name before, but I've just, started to work I've just started working today. If you ask around, some other patrons may know where to find your fiancé. While you have only one outfit to your name at the moment, the office feast doesn't feel like a particularly judgmental place in terms of fashion. Your credibility won't be shifted by what you're wearing here. As long as you, ex as long as you explore the town and talk to people, you should have found a mom soon enough. Okay. Turn back to so on every single mission, every single conversation like this, for example, you're going, you're, 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 you're picking it out. You'll be saying, today you're going to go to a party, or today you're going to go to, I don't know, the market, and then you'll get into a scene like this, and you'll have like two turns, and you'll have three conversations to pick. From this example, you've got to pick which one you're going to speak to. For one turn, you'll have a conversation, then the next turn you'll have another conversation, and the people for conversation will change. So we've got. So if we've got pick conversation, you've spent long to, to do, you've spent a long time in the discussion of the carriage, and that's a good time to something to drink. So basically, yeah, so credibility. The more credible you are, the more credibility you've got, the easier it is for you to have conversations, and the more peril you've got, the more at risk you are. Or the more risk you face. Who's this fella? I'm an inquirer. Handsome young man approaches you, perhaps he'll help you. Or we've got a fellow traveller sits there near the table, having recently become acquainted with himself. He's perhaps he's able to point you in the right direction. Alex and Horn Road. So, right, okay, so I'm going to come back to that in a minute. All right, let me come back to that in a minute because, again, like I said this generic amorous gentleman portrait, generic businessman recently entered Paris portrait. So these are just generic characters. You'll see this face a lot. It's not it's not the same, it's just a different person, but they just use the same generic kind of your generic Amish gentleman. I'm gonna pick this because this will be relevant later. At some point, these are these are people we will meet that if we've got if we've got favour them, they will look kind more kindly on us and it will make conversations easier if they like us essentially. Is how I think this. I never on the first one. It was always very kind of vague as to kind of really kind of. It was a lot. I think it's, I think if you if it was a D and D, this this would be a positive effect on your dice all essentially. So we're going to go with this one. Pick a conversation. You approach a man stand by himself. His wig is slightly chevelled, and he's he has fresh mud on his boots. Uh, bonjour, madame. You must have arrived, just arrived in Paris. He says affably. Where do you journey from? An idyllic form of town to the south. I'm a little sorry I left it behind. It is no significant. I'm happy to be here. Uh, let's go. I uh, do not worry, madame. I'm sure we'll be able to return it there soon enough. He replies with a warm laugh. I came, um, I came, I myself came a few months ago from a similar idyllic surroundings in Brittany. But of course, the harvest has not been so good this year, which is what, what brings me to pass. I'm searching for a way to revitalise our estate back home. 
I tried new, new farming techniques in Porter Tools. I, in Porter Tools, I even built a shrine to Saint Isidore himself. Yet it was to no avail. So I'm here in search of a solution. Avec Madame, what has brought you to pass so far from home? I'm here because of my fancy. I'm on this here. I'd like to follow him anywhere. This is a place. This is the only place where I can achieve the status I deserve. Price is a hub of trade, wealth, and craftsmen. It is why I get the lifestyle I want. Let's go with. Ooh, uh, let's go with this one. Seeking the inner, the fine things of life while you're in the right place for it. Fashion it is a way of life here. He gestures at a tavern. You can see that even the people of more humble means have chosen their attire carefully. I think you'll fit in well with the merchants, lawyers, and physicians of the bourgeoisie. You get a little, fa you get a little favour members of the bourgeoisie. Don't worry, you'll meet them later. Are you in the city alone? Yeah, let's go with this one. Bound and Mobile. Who pauses to think scratching his chin? Why does that name sound so familiar? His eyes go wide for a moment while settling an expression of discomfort. Gathering up his things, he starts he starts to prepare to leave. So, madame, I simply haven't been here long enough to know enough about him. Grab his wrist, please, my sure. Uh, his eyes and looks from sight are obviously torn on what to do. Get close to you, his because if you must know, madame, your fiancé your fiance has made a powerful enemy. And if you don't know how he did that, then you might as well reconsider him entirely. Okay. Without words, he drains his wine glass and leaves. While you may have learned something, you feel like you've still more questions than answers. You should be able to clear all these things up when you find Armand. We've only got two to pick from. Okay. Now you've come a climate acclimate acclimate acclimated I put, I've can't, I'm not pronounced that correctly I do apologize with the guests and travelers your office feast you should be able to find someone clear your tour mond after hours of questioning and searching it's late in the evening and you you're still you're, you you've still yet to find Armand. you're not sure why but you feel exhausted who do you talk to people with such hard work now that you warmed up this may be your chance to finally find where Armand is you approach a woman who who he spotted glancing your uh, uh, your way earlier. Let's go. With that one's the last nervous out of the quest, shifting from foot to foot. She makes small talk for a brief moment before ex excusing herself and disappearing into the crowd. The rooms appear to be emptying out. You're, a gentleman you remember seeing earlier walks by. He might be a little bit more useful. Uh, Let's go, but he looks at he, he looks at you, glances over at the woman who spoke you who you spoke with earlier, then quickens the pace as he walks by. The room is emptying even faster than you manage to get attention of another woman. Uh, could you? She doesn't even slow down before she leaves. After a third person gives you the cold shoulder, you start to wonder what happened. Are you really out of place? Is it something about Armand? What is going on here? Still, you check on the office feast one last time. There's no sign of them on even an open tab with a tavern keep. After waiting around a few hours, you leave the office feast, dragging your small mountain of luggage behind you. After all, the coach was only hard to take you to the tavern. Armand may not have waited for you, like he said he would, but you memorised his address from all the times that you wrote it on the letters to him. It's the middle of the night, the streets are teeming with life. The light from the windows and the street lamps sparkle like stars. You're tired and your feet hurt, but still, you can't help but smile. This is it. This is Paris. No matter what happens, you're still here. For a brief moment, you're not a country girl dragging luggage through the street. You're a person who, you're the per, you're the person you feel that you are when you close your eyes alone. You're overseeing a grand salon surrounded by poets, musicians, scientists, philosophers, and artists. You're elegant, sophisticated, and respected. You're getting close to the address. Armand never described his living conditions much, but he's the son of a baron and his family were, was always well to do. Especially compared to yours, you spent a lot of time in the carriage wondering about the home you spend your life in. Still, you didn't expect this. Call this ha call the house rustic would imply that you were out in the country, not in the centre of a city. The neighbourhood is nice enough, but you're worried that if you breathe too hard on the building, it'll fall over. A welcome warm. A welcome warm a well-kept woman in the Atava maid opens Atava maid opens the door and approaches you. I am sure I assume you are you are Madame Yvette. My name is Camilla, the lovely Camille. Mark Shulman told me to expect you. <laughs> oh, I just just love this bit. 
Uh, mercy can meal, please send it to Armand. Is this where he lives? Oh, God, the rats in there ate him, didn't they? <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, impossible, Demo. I've taken care of all the rats myself. Camille replies, emphasising her point with a playful stomp of her foot. <laughs> Eyeing her worn shoes, you have a feeling the rats didn't go quietly. <clears throat> Fine. When I'm done, I'm only simply going to wish you rats had eaten him. Absolutely. At this, Camille takes a deep nervous breath. I'm afraid to tell you that you, you'll you have to wait, madame. It's been days since I've seen Mon Monsieur Armand. I was hoping he, that he was with you. Still, while you're, st while you're still processing this latest disappointment, Camille seems to notice your amount of luggage for the first time. Mon Dieu, madame, do not carry all of... Did you carry this all of yours? Did you, did you carry all of this yourself? You must be exhausted. She's not wrong. You're not certain how how you're still upright and awake right now. I'm already, I've already made up your bed, madame. Please go inside and let me take care of this. You take your diary and leave the heavy lifting to Camille. The inside of the house is much better than the outside. Camille keeps the place tidy, but she can only do so much. Still, you don't care about the right. You don't care about that right now. You're just happy to have a roof over your head. You flop down and you flop down in the nearby couch, open your door and start to write. You're tired, disappointed and perhaps abandoned. Your writing things down always helps you make sense of a situation. Okay, we gave, we've gained a, we've gained one favour with Honor Aid. Okay. We'll see how that plans out later. Twenty first Mars seventeen eighty nine. Early the next morning, Camille approaches you, occasionally wringing her apron with, wringing her apron with her hands. She's obviously nervous. Madame, there's something you need to know. You should know. She takes a deep breath. She's taking a deep breath, she continues. You're expected to, you're expected to attend a party the day after tomorrow, held by one Viscount Marcel de Foix, de Fox, de Fox. I mean, I'm on reply to the invitation, but you, you, you were here. To, you were to be his date. Uh, what do you know about this bloke? I'm sorry, Madame, but a Viscountess is just, it just well, felt, it just felt above my stature, so I try not to pay attention wherever she came up. Camille buys it with a shrug. I know she never visited the house. My sure mom seemed to like her. From what I could tell, she was a little, how to put this, judgmental. She was a little, very judgmental. I hope that helps, Madame. Well, let's have a part to go to. Camille looks visibly relieved. Perfect. If you need anything washed or prepared, just ask. That reminds me, Camille explains, if you're going to a party, you should probably make sure you're dressed appropriately. Fashion moves so quickly here that the people retire outfits before they have ever, before they ever wear out, even wear out. At this proclamation, you can't help but notice Camille's uniform has been prepared many, many times. Camille continues, Monsieur Armand was always going through clothes so quickly. He said every outfit had a certain amount of novelty. Every time you wore them at a party, the novelty would go down, go down a bit. In fact, even a little thing like wearing the same thing twice in a row could run the novelty out faster. Could you imagine? Fortunately, he knew the most delightful uh, clothier on Rue de Fourberg, Saint Honor. Honor. She runs a shop called La Petite Mogale. I'll draw you some directions. Immediately, she starts sketching some directions, mostly just simple renderings of local landmarks. That Petite Mogale is now available on in the Paris map. If you head out today, you should be well prepared for the party tomorrow night. Explore Paris. Basically, this is this is us. Very nice. With a provincial outfit, which is very, I like that, very plain. With our journal, we've got notables. So basically, at the moment, we've got the, the politics crown. The nobility of the second estate is all transfer centuries. The current king, Louis the Sixteenth, came to power amidst a financial crisis, which has only gotten worse. The nobilities, lavish lifestyles, and costly wars abroad are funded by tax by taxes levied on the lower and middle classes, while they pay nothing. Faction power won. The revolution a major. The first half of the third estate, the commoners. The poorest commoners of France are great in number, but lacking real political power. Originally a fringe movement, the anti-monarchy nationalists have grown in number. A violent clash between revolutionaries and the Crown is all but inevitable. Okay, Second estate, third estate. 
the first estate. So that's something that's important earlier. The first estate wields strong political influence and owns a great deal of land throughout the kingdom, despite the fact that their first loyalty is to the Pope in Rome. Many privileges enjoyed by the church have become a source of resentment among the more patriotic Frenchmen. They are powerful, but they are clearly aligned with the crown, the military, and other minor factions. The armies of France are considered among the most powerful in Europe. Though sworn to protect the king, the cost of foreign wars and unrest at home has led to harsh conditions and poverty wages for the common soldiers. This has left their loyalty strained. Their law to the crown to a degree. The bourgeoisie, the, the last minor faction. The newest of these factions, the bourgeoisie, are merchants traced before academies of the communists in the third state. While the bourgeoisie is wealthy, they lack the titles of the noble classes and thus bear the majority of the country's tax burden. This has created some resentment. So basically, they've got all the money, they've got all the money, they've quite powerful, and these have got nothing. Worth noting. Oh, nope, nothing to Pierre's request. We'll, we'll meet him later. Calendar, let's go into Paris and explore. When we got one, let's go to Petit Mogal, which will visit the location. It's a long walk to Route de Faubourg Saint Honor. On there. But the trek to the Night Street is worth it. Every block hums a vibrant energy, bursting life. Porters and social climbers wind their way through the streets, festooned with brightly coloured parcels. Paris may be a city swimming in fashion and finery, but this is the source. The street is home to all the major fashion houses in the country, and to Rose Breton, the personal dressmaker to the Queen herself. And now you're here, back home they sigh and dream of places like this, then quietly go back to their little lives. Not you, that your circumstances may be less than ideal, but you're still here. We're ambitious, very ambitious. That petit mogul, you mumble to yourself idly, trying to make sure you remember the name of the shop. Eventually you find a small boutique tucked between the far, between some far grander buildings. You open the door and walk into a tiny shop, which seems even smaller due to the abs due to how absolutely full it is. This this is this isn't just a boutique; it's a workshop for whoever works here. Walls of gorgeous fabric cover every available surface. A cloying smoke hangs in the air. The scent is pleasant but wholly unfamiliar. As soon as you open, as the door swings shut behind you, you hear a sudden rustling of fabric further in the store. A customer, Hamdullah, a surprising young voice calls out. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to La Petite Mogol. A woman visibly the owner calls out, uh, calls out to you, how may I help? Uh, I have an important party soon. I need to look amazing. What is the, what is the smell? Oh, that she, her cheeks flush with embarrassment. It's that's lucky since I liked it. On, I light it on slow business days. Her next words are uh, her next words are quite mumble. Her next words are quite mumble. My mother gave it to me. Now how may I help you? I don't need the tutorial. I was light up, Madame. You've come to the right place. So basically, uh, and and so our next event is being held by the Crown. They're like conservative gowns. Sometimes they're like caraco ensembles or robes a la. Polonaise. So if we look at this one, conservative gown, crown love it, revolution hate it. Okay, as you can see again, crown love the robe, robe on on chemise, military and bourgeois like it, revolution hate it. Another conservative gown, again pretty light there, humble caraco and skirt. See so if we look at the military love that. See, so we look quite not bothered. So if we go, if we look at something like this, we get a plus four on that, plus fourteen, plus a change military like it. It's a lot of money. Uh, See, so we look at that. We can't. See, so we look at that. We can't actually. We've got hundreds. Can we actually, can we actually afford any of these? This moment in time, so we can't afford that because it costs an arm and a leg. Can't afford that because we've only got hundred. 100 spondulis, 100 whatever they call them, francs or pounds. The best option we've got is this one, it's a plus 10. Not great, but it's also 43 because that's all we can afford. We've got nothing to sell. We could sell up of it, but they're going to military like that. I'm not going to keep because the military like it, okay? So if we go with something like this. <sighs> Let's go with this one. Purchase. Confirm. 
you just spent some of your money. Leave us East by outfits. Cool. Right, like, okay, leave the shop. 22nd March, 1789. You're working to a vision of sunlight filtering through the shutters. Scattered some, scattered some beans across this dusty bedroom. It takes a few minutes before you've godly remember the events that brought you here. You also remember that tonight you have a party to attend. Camilla enters, Camilla enters your bedroom full of cheer. Madame, when 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 would you like to start getting ready? Is if this is an is important as an invitation it seems, I should get I should start preparing now. Not yet, Camille. I still have things I need to care of today. Camille winces at the statement, she looks at the floor. I don't know how to tell you this, madame, but part of the of a woman of your station really usually takes all day. On days where you have to party, you really won't have to you won't have time to spend exploring Paris. Once you got once you go to your wardrobe you can we can get started. Yep, we don't need a tutorial. Of course you are, madam. But Camille laughs that you are following you as you start to get ready for your party tonight. So go to the party. Pick a dress. So we've got military, exhausted credit, but so again we've already we've already exhausted already. Because we've already done something, so yeah, let's go this one. The crown plus two, not great, but it'll do. When your carriage drops you off at the party, you find yourself waiting in line for some, quite some time. Looking at the guests, you wonder if you've underdressed or overdressed. It's honestly hard to tell. You look yourself one last time to confirm you're wearing a humble calico skirt a party's held, to a party held by the crown. The guests have no strong feelings on your outfit and your credibility has not changed much. You've just gained some credibility. The more credibility you have, the easier it is for you to deceive someone during a credibility check. There we go. With preparations like this, the results tonight could be a toss-up. Okay. While you're determine, determining your stand in the world of fashion, you manage to have an interesting room while in, line. You, while in line. You make a mental note of it just in case. You gain a piece of cheap crown gossip. This will be useful later. Unfortunately, you can feel the exhaustion setting as soon as you think of the full interior ahead of you tonight. It's going to be a long night. Credibility down. Being exhausted is good to give in your credibility penalty. Immediately upon entering the vestibule, you are greeted by a doorman holding a small ledger. While he isn't physically buying your entry, his, his man certainly is. Uh, nay, madame, uh, yes, expectantly. Ah, oh, this most unfortunate doorman replies in trust and supposedly disappointed. The good vice, vice count de Vox is so looking forward to seeing him tonight. Please give our deepest regrets that his absence. Our well wishes to his health. Is there anything I can get you? Uh, uh, please convey my deepest gratitude to, to our hostess and at that time eager to meet her. No, I'm not giving any wine. We, madame, I shall make sure the vice count hears it herself. Yeah, murmurs from the other guests of the vestibule. Your gratitude and enthusiasm seem to have made an impression on them. The dormer seems rather unfazed. Credibility has gone up. Before you can ask one of the questions, he bows deeply to you. Madame, Madame, Vice Counterfort instructed me specifically to inform her as soon as you had arrived. We've heard so much about you. Enjoy the party, he says with a smile before leaving. Okay, so we've got generic couple A. Guess a minor painting of, host, of the hostess. Apparently, it was painted by someone of considerable skill. In fact, you might be able to meet the, such a person later, Elizabeth. Oh, we want to meet Elizabeth. Uh, this is a bog standard. Okay. This is a pair of ladies whispering. Okay, I'm going to go with quick because I want to. This is what I want to pursue a lot faster than I did last time. Very interesting one, this one. Okay, in the one corner of the party, you hear, you find two guests clustered around a painting hanging on the wall. You're talking low voices to themselves. They're talking low voices to themselves. You pause to examine the painting yourself. It's a beautiful piece that shows how they're standing there filled, posing with a dog. The eyes and lips in particular look marvellously lifelike. Do you have an idea, Marcel, how, how Marcel managed to get this? A man asks. His face is a picture of shock, not taking his eyes off the painter for one moment. He must he must know the Viscount to very well in order to use her first name so freely. I have no idea, the woman replies, glancing furtively around the room. 
Ever since Madame Le Bruin started painting portraits of Queen herself, she seems to feel she is above normal, normal social niceties. It must have cost a fortune just to make an open, make an opening in Madame Le Bruin's schedule. You assure that Madame, you assume that Madame Le Bruin knew about such nice social niceties to begin with the man quips, and the two of them start uh, share a slice chuckle at the, abs at the absent artist's expense. You think that someone who worked on the commission would care a little more about what other they thought about her? The woman turns to you first of all, what do you think Madame Le Bon and her eccentricities? I personally have always admired her willingness to strain against convention. I think Madame Le bon can be as rude as he pleases, her skills speak for themselves. Not even great painters are above consequences for society. Le Bon will have hers yet. Uh, the choice will increase your power by a small amount. Yeah. You're fighting forward in the sleeves room quite for a moment. So man and woman both glance back and forth between each other for a while trying to figure out what to say. Finally, the man managed to say, Ah, I see that Madeleine Boone has quite the fan. I must concede that there are a few portrait painters who have so superbly captured the image of the Queen. God preserve her, I suppose that. We should go the woman to up to taking her friend gently by the elbow and lead him away. You've gained some power. Our powerless decisions can often get you what you want. If you if your power bar fills up, then it means something unfortunate will happen to you. Be careful with how much you take on. Yeah, this is help. This helps us make. This helps us in decision checking where we're trying to get what we want, and this kind of puts us in danger. Okay, you've gained some favour. Good, because okay, the two of them hurry away to another part part of the party. While that certainly didn't make you, you didn't certainly while well, that certainly didn't make you any friends you know that Madeleine Bunn is a far more important person to be on the good side of that two random hangers on at a party yep okay empty room so looks like we're going to speak to M uh, Marcel appears a woman in a staggering pink dress is approaching you carrying her pet dog judging by the way other guests are looking at her you can summarize that this this is the Vicantes Marcel de Foy, de Foy. Uh, yeah, anyway. And once again, I apologise for my butchering of the French language. The woman invited you and Armand here. Pick the conversation with quite no choice of it, really. You nearly mistake the woman standing in front of you for some kind of walking confection. <laughs> <laughs> A pampered dog lunges in her arms. I don't believe we have the chance to properly introduce ourselves. I am Vicantes Marcel de Foix. De Foix. Her voice raises in volume imperceptibly, but it's enough to draw attention of the large crowd in the room. Everyone, this is event, a mom's fiancé. A murmur of interest washes through the crowd. You can feel her, her eyes focus on you. I'm glad to see, so glad to see you, a mom, that ambitious little thing. Has told me so much about you. In fact, I'd say he's quite infatuated with you. A common girl like yourself, you're so lucky. You've got a little credibility. Where's Armand, by the way? That's actually what I was hoping to find out. Do you know where, where I can find him? The so stares at you, concerned and shocked. You don't know where he is, and yet you still come to this little event of mine. She gestures at freehand at the most, spend, at the most splendid party you've ever see, be seen in your life. That is so kind of you, of course I'll help. Great a little credibility. After all, I've already, you've already helped me. I'm on that admission of the light, was always reaching above his station, always asking for people to listen to the ideas that nobody should even dare entertain. His, his audacity truly knew no bounds. His, her eyes are focused on you, but she's speaking to the crowd who seem to whisper in agreement. Even the dog regards you with, a mal with malice. Look at that vicious little so-and-so. Now, uh, now, now, not only do I find that he's a coward, He's fled his fiancée and the consequences of his gall. This isn't good. But now I have this commoner who doesn't know her place either. I'm a commoner, but at least I, I know how to treat my guests. I'm guessing this means that you don't know where he is. <laughs> Myself pours it to a pet dog. I don't know where he is. In fact, it's a shame that Amon's already scored off somewhere. I was like, really hoping to tell him to his face. But then again, he was always so good at disappointing people. You'll have to do. Please pay attention, I, because I hate repeating myself. Your Armand has gone off somewhere on another one of his foolish little political endeavours. However, if you'd ever find him, tell him that he is, uh, he is, an, he is an 
and I should be a treacherous weasel who should go back to whatever backwater it called out of and leave the running of this country to his superiors. Okay, credibly it's gone through the floor. A small chair rings up from the crowd. Marcel studies your face intently for a moment. The voice suddenly trails off again saying, Oh, you poor girl, don't look so hurt. Think of this as an educate think this as a, as, a, as an educate as think of this as educational. You don't belong in Paris the same way that a stray cat doesn't belong in that dress. She she gestures dismissively dismissively at your finery. We've lost even more credibility. Try try looking at us, act like us, stop. S trying to look like us, trying to look like us, act like us, stop. You're just embarrassing yourself. Lost more credibility. Now leave my estate and never show your face again. Before you can reply, a valet, gra a, a valet grabs you roughly by the arm, drags you from the room. People like Viscount for don't need to do their own dirt work. You have servant, they have servants for it. It takes far longer than you like to get outside as, you, as the entryway is crowded with guests preparing to leave. You can feel the eyes wearing heavily upon you. When you finally get to the door, you feel a, you feel a brutish shove and you stumble out into the courtyard, barely keeping your balance in your heels. The area is equally crowded with various persons entering their personal carriages. You can hear somebody snicker, but you have no idea who it was. The only thing left to do is go home. Sorry, this has been a quite a night. I'll just leave. That's fine, but my face was the only pretty thing in that gaudy house anyway. Boiling over the anger, you turn and rain insults upon the house, upon the host, even her pet, even her dog. In fact, you even consider throwing your shoe roughly out one of their windows before you remember how much you like that shoe. It's then you notice that several carriages have stopped just just to watch your display. Scanning the face of your audience, you see them. You, you see the glare on your mute faces of various podcasts. Your views on Marcel and the Crown in general. I'm not going to notice the coachman of valleys are on the other hand think you're hilarious. <laughs> You've lost some favour with members of the Crown. You've gained some favour with members of the Revolution. You'll meet these people later. You nod to more the push, more appreciative members of your audience before leaving towards your own carriage. You and you arrive at the place where your carriage is parked. You quickly find that it isn't. It's gone. You check to make sure you're in the right place, but no, the old carriage was hired. It's simply not here. He went home and passing coachman said helpfully while adjusting the harness on a particularly grumpy horse. The doorman came out about an hour ago and told him you wanted the coach to leave without you. It seemed to put real important, so we went home. Before you could even respond, he he gets into his carriage, moving, leaving you alone with yet another indignity. Going back, to, going back to Marcel is obviously unacceptable. It's far too far. It's too far to walk home, as most of the guests have already left. This is different because the first time we met, we met a completely different person on this one. However, there appear to be three coaches waiting to leave. Each one of them quite different. Ooh, which one, which one, which one, which one? I know, I'm not going to go this one because I know what's in that one. I want to do a different one. I'm going to go bold or extravagant. Let's go with a bolder one in the middle. The casual front of you has obviously been used by a soldier of some sort. The driver is leaning intently towards the passenger compartment waiting for orders. You recognise the signal of the Queen's Dragoons on the side of the carriage. It feels noble and primal, but also capable. You consider the bold carriage for a moment. Is this who you'd like to ride with? He's a man of honour, sworn to pick trance. And the <laughs> He's a man of, man of honour, sworn to protect France. And the next best thing to that, let's go. Let's consider the carriages. Do, do, do. We've run out already. Uh, okay. Right, so I can't, so... Right, so basically I can't. We're stuck with this one. Okay. So you can't, right, so we can't, we're stuck doing this, and so it looks like we've gone back within them. So to settle the decision, you set out, ready to entrust your fortune to an honourable stranger. At the sound of your approaching footsteps, the coachman's hand flicks towards his weapon, turning towards you. He looks up, up, up you up and down before he relaxes. With an apologetic nod, he gestures you towards the door of the carriage. You open your knuckles gently outside the carriage, against the carriage door. The door opens immediately, and the man steps out. out, steps out. He bows to you, form them precise. Corporal Dumas of the Queen's Dragoons. How may I be of service? My name is Vectico. I may have a trouble for a ride home. 
Uh, please call me, Yvette. I've been set my great. I've been set by grave misfortune. I need your help. Glances off to the side and shuffles his uh, slightly. That does sound terrible. How may I? How can I refuse? Corporal Dumas gestures you to the carriage and you climb in. Second, your seat to the carriage takes off, working its way towards the main road. The pace is fast and purposeful. Corporal Dumas is, is across from you, not quite staring, but certainly assessing you. I don't mean to read, but what was a listed man like you doing at that, that party? Uh, you're not being rude. It's a fair question. He replies, flicking his, his rank insignia of emphasis. Every now and again, someone remembers my father and sends me an invitation as a courtesy between nobles. Despite my considerable talents, I think they're just inviting my father's memory, not me. Still, I attend because I hate to insult the host by turning them down. Our Commodore Ryan was nice enough to arrange for me to have this carriage for the evening. He moves around to your conveyance, which is probably only meant for officers. Let me turn the question on. What was the common like doing at that party? Uh, I was abandoned by the love of my life. I'm now trying to find him. You're the woman on the mission, then. Corporal de Masquins are offering a mock salute. When you find him, I'm sure he'll appreciate your loyalty. At least, I can't imagine, imagine a man who wouldn't. Alex Dumas, this is Dumas, okay. Is there anything else I'd like to know? Do you have a good time tonight? Of course, I I enjoy being the centre of attention. There isn't, when the, and there isn't an audience I cannot thoroughly laugh. From the theatre to the sword, I have, I, have a repartee, I have repartee for all occasions. As you can tell, I'm extremely humble. This gives me, it gives me an exaggerated wink. What be also what happened in there? My fiancée has some memories they tried to make sport to me, emphasise on the tried. Corporal de Mastin nice approvingly, I saw your performance outside right as you left. You, do, you, you don't seem very shaken. <laughs> Excellent. He sighs and looks out the window at the passing scenery. You made the right move. There's a certain kind of person that sees sport in, in hurting the vulnerable. Whether that vulnerable come, vulnerability comes from the circumstance, ability or birth, they're all, they're all the same craven creatures that feed on feeling powerful. You can never let them see the bot their barbs land. Even when they sting, you deserve better. What made you decide to give me a stranger a ride? Like let's start that one again. What made you decide to give a stranger like myself a ride? When I wear these colours, I present the queen herself. I can never turn out a woman in need. He strains up in his seat, looking every bit the man of action. Besides, it's the right thing to do, which is its own reward. How do you find yourself without? A, how did you? How do you find yourself? To be without her way home. My my horrid host, would you believe that someone tricked my coachman into leaving without me? He took us while you're in you're you're here in my carriage, so I have no choice but to believe it, unless this is some new sport where the beautiful women see where beautiful women see how many rides they can get from gullible do gooders like myself. If it is you'll have to teach me the rules sometime so we can play it on equal footing. I like this guy. You talk with Corporal de, you talk with Corporal de Mass for a while longer, exchanging jokes and pleasantries. The conversation turns to your childhood in the country and coming to Paris. As you might have imagined, I'm not from Paris originally either. My father had to sell some precious things in order to bring me across the ocean and pay for my school. And needless to say, I can imme I was immediately captivated by it with life here. How you're finding your first your first days in Paris, first few days in Paris. Uh, it's, uh, it's trying harsh consequences, but I see the possibility of great rewards. Yeah, finally, somebody who gets it. Corporal Dumas slaps his thigh, and last week's amped amazing. I'd have, I have, I have you know, it, it took me over a year and passed to equally grasp that fact. Wow, he says, I went to other cities. Sometimes I feel like that's why I fell in love with this place. It does not unconditionally. It does not love unconditionally. It, may, it can be infuriating, fickle still. Here you can climb to the heights greater than any other place in the world. Your, your conversation with Corporal Damas continues for entire ride. He's polite, forward, and seems to have an healthy respect for you. However, you find that he dodges your question whenever you, the subject of his family come up. You just try not to let it bother you. Everyone has their secrets after all. You're surprised by the carriage coming to a stop. You were so lost in dialogue that you hadn't even realised you've managed... You've managed to make it home before the coachman even before the coachman can even hop off his box. Corporal de Mass opens the door and the door and steps down. He offers you his hand. 
he helps you down with efforts and favours you with a theatrical bow after braving all manners of danger we arrive at your home safe and sound the Queen's Dragoons are proud to have another great victory to their name we get more favour this bike while we accept no payment, I must one favour of you name it next time that we meet please call me Thomas Alexander he pours his stone to your eyes or simply Alex if you like before you come and play, he's already bounded, bounded into his carriage and sailed off into the night. You turn, your t your, you, t you turn to your home and see that Camilla's already there, holding the door open for you. Who was that, she asks. A most intriguing man of honour, some, someone hopefully I'll see more of. Your maid bring with, your may mind bring, brimming with new possibilities, you step inside and head upstairs. Slowly you get undressed, open your journal and record exactly what transpired tonight. Now that was massively different to what happened last time. Massively different. The Queen was recently seen protecting a spectacular new diamond necklace. It is a sign of real power or necessary excess. So we lost one, f we got minus one with Elizabeth, but said, so, well, I was disappointed. Okay. Chapter one, establishing oneself, 23rd of March, 1789. Okay, let me just get a drink and we should crack on. Well, that first that already that's already very different to the first one through we had that entire that entire prologue was not the first bit with the stamp on the racks which is still the, my favorite part of the opening prologue because that was in the demo the demo was a prologue and that made me laugh my socks off and it did the second time i played it but that that was a very very different to what happened the first time which makes me wonder what's going to happen now. Anyway, you awaken the next morning in a bed that still feels unfamiliar. In the process of waking up, you start to recall last night's humiliations and wish that you were merely the product of some fit, your fitful dreams. Unable to go back to sleep, you spend some time tossing and turning in bed before not finally sitting up. Nothing is going to make last night go away. The only option is to decide on what to do next. You feel exhausted, not physically, but in your very soul, like your fate and past has already been decided, and to remain here would be pointless. It would just it would be the humiliations last night over and over again. However, stronger than the exhaustion is the simming rage you feel at the, at the outrageousness of your circumstances and the injustices of your treatment, and the thought of going back to your tiny village after finally making it or make finally making it to Paris. No, you must not go. You, no, you must not go back. You cannot go. You cannot go back. One, not while a single candle of your ambition still ambition still burns. Camille pops into your room, already dressed and ready for the day. Bonjour, madame, she beams. Looks like you've had quite an active night. Is there anything I can get you? Please find me spare clothes, smother me. I'm not sure, do you know how to make a murder look like an accident? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, madame, the only thing I've killed are rats, fish, chickens, and one porcupine. Okay. <laughs> I would love to know the story behind that. Those didn't look very accidental either. I don't think I'd be able to help you get away with murder. I just... <laughs> I'd love to know the story behind that. I really would like to know that, whether, what the hell happened there. <laughs> oh, if, you, if you've got any idea how Camille killed a porcupine, put it, put it in the comments, because I'd love to know. I'd love to know why she did that, but anyway. All right. Now, if you want me to clean up after murder, that I could do. <laughs> Oh, splendid, splendid. And just the look on her face then as well. Still, I can't let you start the morning without something to drink. It wouldn't be healthy. What can I get you, madame? Tea, please. I need to keep my wits about me if I'm going to people's trust. <laughs> no, let's go with tea. Camille returns, Camille returns so quickly that with the tea that you search, you made it ahead of time. It's piping hot, fragrant, not too bitter. You drink the brew in silence. The gears of your mind silent, getting up to speed. The tiredness phase, your anger does not. Case of credibility, you take a few minutes to finish your drink of silence and collect your thoughts. Something that keeps coming to your, coming to mind is all the gossip you've heard during the time at the party. Most of it was idle puddle, but some of it felt scandalous and valuable. Without inheritance or a job, you'll need a way to make some money. Maybe someone would be willing to buy this gossip. Is that the, is that a thing people do? Camille chaps taps her chin thoughtfully well. When I was at Les, uh, Les Halas the other day, someone mentioned something about a newspaper with some amazing society pages. 
I think it was called the La Trompette de Purple. Purple, purple. Can I, if, if, if you know how to pronounce that again, put it in the comments because I, but I, I butchered that the last time I did that played this game. La, La Trompette de Purple is now available to visit in the Paris map. They'd have to get their stories from somewhere. Why not you? In fact, I bet you'd be great at that, madame. Mercy, I shall just do that. With that, your day begins. Right. Let's explore Paris. Let's go the trumpet to purple, to purple, purple. A popular, if uns unscrupulous newspaper, spend the day here to sell gossip, manipulate public opinion, and update your knowledge of all the factions, political factions in Paris. You walk through the streets following Camille's directions, eventually find yourself threading through narrow and narrow streets, the alleys packed with refuse and the occasional vagrant napping in the shade, feel almost oppressive in their closeness. Suddenly the alley opens up alley opens up into wider streets near a square. You clear this you can hear the splashing of a fountain nearby. You finally find the sign for a trumpet de purple de per per apple. The paint appears to be fresh but the office smells all it seems awfully small. To his locks, he gives to knock. Nobody answers. Look around, you find, you find a hastily written note. Lodged on the door, door for him, it reads, Office temporary closed, engaged in engaging in emer emergency fundraising effort. We apologise for inconvenience. Management. P.S. Fear not, fear not this sit back. This is light. The light of journalism will never fade. It's at that moment you realise the splashing in the fountain is getting loud, accompanied by some sort of most effective profanity you've ever heard. I guess your petty judge will be decided to investigate. Aha! A reedy voice shouts triumphantly. You come upon a man in grubby, grubby, grubby finery, up to his knees in the fountain. His shoes have been carefully placed on the water's edge. He does a little jig as he drops a wet coin in his snuff box, which is clutched tightly in his other hand. Noticing your presence, the, madame, the man in the fountain turns to you with a nod and a smile that attempts to be ingratiating. Bonjour, madame. Uh, are you Pierre, the esteemed editor of La Trompette de Poeple? His smile, broad, his smile broadens and the man bows. His manner is suddenly as elegant as the finest courtiers in Versailles. Why, I am in fact a bon, bon dame. My name is, my name is Pierre Red, Ren, Renaudot. I may be of service. I have some valuable social information, information for sale. We don't need a tutorial. He raises an eyebrow conspirator, conspiratorially and leans close, in, in closer to you. It's best smells like cheap brandy. You are in luck, madame, because we're always willing to pay for such valuable information. Suddenly he suddenly flushed with embarrassment, he pauses look in his snuff box. I do I do hope that coins are an acceptable form of payment. Cheap grand gossip. The Queen has recently bedecked, seen bedecked in a spectacularly new diamond necklace. It is a sign is it a sign of war power or a necessary excess? Sell the gossip, increase or decrease of power. Okay, so uh, are you sure you want to sell this? If you do this, there's, there's no chance the public will find out it's from me. Kept, so there's no chance they'll find out it's me. Cool, got some money. Off we go back home into to the next day. You wake up the next morning to a polite knock on the bedroom door frame. Camille carry, carrying an armful of letters. Er, uh, madame. Camille star starts with both confused and hesitant. There's a lot. There's a lot of letters here for you. Are they for me or are they for Armand? Well, Madame, there, you're a little famous now. Everyone, everyone's heard about your running with that dreadful party a few days ago. Now they're preyed upon. How they're preyed upon your honour and spirited away your carriage driver, leaving you trapped and alone. You don't think that's exactly how it happened, but you don't think that's exactly how it happened. But decide against fretting over the details. Camille starts to talk faster and faster. Then, when all was lost, you were saved by a beautiful stranger who escorted you home in the moonlight night. It's so romantic, no? Oh, the room is already running rampant. Why, just in the market the other day, I heard someone say you've taken a liking to... Camille stops and stares at the space and blushes. Actually, never mind that. Yes, let's let's never mind that. Uh, never mind what. It's just rumours from the marketplace, but nothing you should you should dignify. In any case, this is your chance to meet people in the city who don't hate you, or Monsieur Armand. 
You receive many party invitations. You can now receive party invitations from all over Paris. In fact, I'm sure that anyone who really judges you, fairly is going to love you. Yes, we don't with, with that day begins. Uh, do do do. Yeah, go on. Church party close. Uh, and then we've got. Are these on the same day? Tenders are fascinating at the Opal Gala. This intimate party is most expected. It's very generous amusement. Uh, request attendance. Uh, let's accept the crown. Yeah, request him to a military ball. Yeah, go on then. Uh, Madame Rivillon to a wine tasting. Yeah, we'll accept that. I should, right, so. We've got lots of parties to go to. Plenty of space between all of them. So let's explore Paris today. Lots to look at. This is necessary honesty. So we've got Capi Principe. So we know that's a dress. That's Parc uh, Moncal. That is a point of interest. That's a shop. That's that's a shop. That's a shop. That's a point of interest, I assume. Current objective. Okay. I think this is all something that we're going to look at in the next episode. And we've got the so we've got lots of things to look at, but I think we're going to look at that in the next episode or the next half of this video. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.